What? What? Who? Aurora frantically clawed at the substance being blasted into her face. Each time she opened her mouth, she would cough and splutter. Black goo was covering her and she felt like she would be overpowered by it. Yasmin, help! She screamed. Looking behind her, Yasmin was gone from her side of the bed and was missing. Panic slowly rose up inside of her as she tried to understand what was happening. No! 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 She screamed. The black goo stopped flooding over her body and a voice called out. Honey, you okay? You okay? You're safe. I'm so sorry. I didn't think this would happen. Arms wrapped around her head and she soon felt the warmth of a person. Her mind was still racing as she wasn't able to process what had happened to her. Who, who? She stammered. It's me, Yasmin. I'm sorry. Yasmin's voice was filled with heartache and emotions. What was that stuff? Aurora asked. Holding up her hand, she saw out of the corner of her eyes that the black goo was gone and no longer there, though her hands were still covered in some kind of liquid. It's just water. I tried to wake you up early, just in case, but you weren't responding to my voice," Yasmin explained. Aurora stayed silent, trying to understand the words Yasmin was telling her. Where did you get the water from? It's just water from a regular cooking pot. One of the larger ones since I didn't know how much I would need to wake you up. I didn't expect you to have such a violent reaction to it. What did you think it was? Yasmin asked, letting Aurora's head go. Yasmin looked at her face and placed both of her hands on either side of Aurora's head. Yasmin seemed concerned about the way Aurora had acted. I just saw this black goo covering me and you were gone. Aurora shook her head, a tremble going through her body. I just thought the worst. Yasmin likely felt a tremble since Aurora could see a tear rolling down Yasmin's face. With one of her hands, Yasmin brushed back Aurora's damp hair. Even after the hair was no longer covering half of Aurora's face, Yasmin still kept using her hand to brush Aurora's hair back as if the action would help reassure Aurora. Placing a hand on Yasmin's waist, Aurora asked, Yasmin? On Yasmin's face, there was a brief smile which quickly changed to a frown and transitioned to Yasmin sobbing. I'm sorry. I didn't know this would happen when I tried to wake you up. I just didn't want to see you have to go back into the pit. Hearing the words coming out of Yasmin made Aurora happy inside. She felt that Yasmin was a true friend who really had her best interest in mind. Hey, hey, I'm good. I must have been between cycles when I woke up. You were just being a good friend. Hey, did you get Aurora up? It's almost time. What happened here? Opal's voice was heard. Aurora turned her head to see Opal sticking half her body into the room but pausing after seeing the two of them. Yeah, I'm up. It's just a thing, don't worry about it. Opal slowly nodded her head and said, Okay, you'll tell me if it's something. Yeah, Aurora responded, smiling at Opal. Cool, just make sure to hurry up. Promise a hug? Nodding her head, she couldn't help but laugh at Opal. Turning back to look at Yasmin, who looked like she had stopped crying, she moved Yasmin close to her and kissed her on her belly. We should get ready. Yasmin didn't say anything, just nodding her head in agreement. Walking out of the room, Aurora held on to one of Yasmin's hands. Yasmin's hand felt timid, likely her still feeling sorry about what had gone down in the morning. With her thumb, Aurora stroked the back of Yasmin's hand, trying to reassure her. She could feel Yasmin gradually tightening her grip on Aurora's hand. Having showered the night before, Aurora led the way to the changing area when getting ready for team practices. 
With how heavy the suits were, they were kept in a separate changing area. Entering the changing room, she saw almost all the blades getting ready. The area was a long rectangular room, allowing everyone to discuss game strategies easier. When she went from the knight's changing area to the blades, Aurora had to get used to how everyone was able to see everyone changing easily. She remembered how the other blades would tease her and how red her face got. They glanced at her walking in. The difference was a lack of teasing about her waking up. Seeing Opal looking at her with Roy, Aurora understood that Opal had told the others to not tease her like usual. Opal made some motion with one hand. Okay? Aurora signed back that she was okay, and another sign meaning sisterly love. Macy, who was next to Opal and also changing into a suit, signed, None for me? Smiling, Aurora signed, You too. Opal signed to Macy, Back off. Macy laughed, causing the others to look over at her. Going to the locker with the designation of 5th blade, she let go of Yasmin's hand and opened up the locker. Inside was a suit and uniform that was worn under it. Removing her pajamas, she took out her uniform and opened it up. Inserting each of her legs into the suit, it felt like she was being embraced by a snug outfit. It was weird how the suit still felt unrestrictive, allowing her to easily move her limbs but feeling tight. Pulling out the suit, which was larger than her, the locker held up the suit to allow easy access to it. Armor plates shifted and the back opened up. Getting into the suit, she felt herself being completely covered and plunged into darkness. A feeling of power and strength surged into her body, making her feel refreshed beyond what she felt out of it. A moan passed through her lips feeling a sensation of power piercing into her body. Princess, how are you feeling? Opal's voice was heard through the communication system. Feeling better. The suit is doing its thing, so I should be good for a while. Make sure you take extra recharge packs just in case. Yasmin reminded her, joining in on the conversation. I know, Aurora answered and sheepishly grabbed several and placed them in the storage unit on the suit. All the suits for the knights, even more for the blades, were decked out with custom features. Aurora's suit had more elements that kept her sleeping issues in check, which is what the packs were for. Moving and twisting her arms and legs, Aurora felt the status of everything and felt like she was good to go. Receiving confirmation from Vera, she signed an okay to the rest of the group who were already finished and waited for her. Princess always takes the longest. Ellis teased her. I didn't take that much longer. This time. She whispered the last part. No, you didn't. Yasmin said and added the sign for hug. With how their suits were designed, it was hard to feel physical contact so the blades had come up with their own signs, which they also tend to use outside of training sessions. Aurora looked at the others and saw signs for hugs, kisses, and princess being directed at her. Whenever she saw the sign for princess, she would feel her face heating up since it was created just for her by everyone in the room. In a large room, all ten of the blades were waiting for the next phase. It appeared similar to the rooms they had their simulations in, which made the process more familiar. Just think of it like it's a simulation, Aurora told herself as she tried to calm her nerves. You okay? Ellis signed to Aurora. Nervous. Aurora signed back. We're here with you. Ellis signed to her. Heads up. We'll soon be boots on the ground in an extremely hostile environment. Keep your heads on the swivel and remember your training, especially from the pit. Make sure to remember that death here is permanent. Zawa spoke calmly through a mic. For the creator, they always bonded. Zaya, 
You're with me. Lexi, make sure to take the remaining blades and secure the site for the knights that will appear. Coordinate with the leaders of each of the teams. Hearing all of Zara's commands, Aurora felt her heart beginning to beat. The room was plunged into darkness and the next thing she knew, she and everyone else was in the middle of a field. Her first reaction was that she was back in the pit, but seeing everyone else was with her, Aurora began to calm down. Ellis, you pair with Pearl, Yasmin with the princess, yes of course, you're with Macy Opal. Ida, with me, Lexi ordered. Make a cross formation and back to back to one another. The team should be appearing in the middle, so make sure to give enough room. Lexi pointed out where she wanted them to stand in position. Aurora went over to where Yasmin was, and the two of them headed towards where they were meant to stand watch. From attached to her back, Aurora pulled out her large rifle. Having it in her hand was a comfort, though it didn't have the infinite rounds of energy in the battery. She knew anything hit by the blast wouldn't be having a fun experience. Once her rifle was out of power, she had a bladed weapon that would welcome any opponents coming at her. Reaching the designated location, she faced away from Yasmin and checked for any targets. She made sure to keep her breathing even, softening the effects of a suit which kept her alert. At the moment, it was making her feel more anxious due to the substance racing through her. The addition to the suit was the solution that Zara and Miss Winter reached, allowing her to participate even with her disability. You're too good of a fighter for us to just let you sleep in late and laze about, Zara had once told her. When it was learned that her sleeping in was something outside of her control, it was one of the few times someone had really believed in her, which is why her words stuck with Aurora for so long. I wish that Zara had never figured out a way to let me fight in battles, Aurora complained. I don't. I wouldn't have been able to get to know you if you hadn't become a knight, Yasmin said through the communication channel. Thanks, I'm also happy to have met you and everyone else, Aurora agreed. Cut the chatter, Zaya's words cut in. If you have enough time for sentimental stuff, then you have enough time to do your job and keep an eye out. Start acting like Blades. Yes, Second Blade. They answered in unison. A war sighed at being reprimanded by Zaya, though it was better than getting it from Zara. Getting back to paying attention, A war observed the field. She saw a thick forest next to the area which stretched on past where she could see. The forest was closest to the two of them, causing some anxiety to creep up inside of her. With the trees, it was harder to see if anything was sneaking up on them. Vera, do you detect any signs near the forest? There appears to be some sounds, though based on my files, the noises are from common animals which pose no threat to us. A feeling of intense pressure was felt for a second. Without needing to look, Aurora understood there was a team of knights appearing on the scene. Now that the knights have arrived, we will begin our assessment of the area. The key is to understand the current circumstances so that we may eliminate the darkness on this world and begin rebuilding. Zara's voice was heard. I, along with Zaya, will be taking one of the teams with us and going ahead to detect any threats. Lexi will be in command and will dictate the terms of engagement. I want everyone to return, so be on your guard. Stay safe and may the creator be with you. Bringing up a map of the area, Aurora saw two large dots moving away with an arrow that marked the team. Having the symbol was better for those not in direct command so that it didn't clutter up the screen but still conveyed the information. I've created two channels, one for blades and another for general comms. This way, we can listen to the princess's sappy words without anyone else listening. General comms will be for when we need to communicate with the knights, Lexi said. Ashley, you'll be team A and Jill, you'll be team B. Set your teams to have two channels, one for team communication and another for general comms. 
Remember to leave general comms free as much as possible. Understood, Third Blade, they answered. Just like First Blade had said, I want everyone to make it back, so keep your eyes open. Team leaders will be coordinating with me, but remember to keep ears open for anything the other Blades may say. As Lexi finished addressing the team leaders, a Warsaw point light up on her HUD. I've sent you guys points where I want you to be around the two teams. Our main job is to make sure these guys get enough experience to lead soldiers once the administration begins their recruiting. Lexi explained to the group. Understood, Third Blade. Aurora and the others said. Looking over at Lexi, Aurora saw Lexi signing to her. Be alert and stay safe. Aurora signed that she would and also signed back, kiss. Yasmin led the way to where they were assigned, which was to the right side of the two teams. Walking in the line, Team A and Team B were staggered to allow them clear sights. Those that used guns or rifles were on the outermost side while short-range weapons were on the inside. Several cities were within a day's march. Lexi was informed that they were going to be assigned the larger city, while Zara and Zaya went to the smaller one. Looking on the HUD, Aurora could see a dot that blinked intermittently. Aurora wondered what they would encounter in the city they were marching towards. Would the people be grateful for their arrival, or would they be met with anger and distrust? She thought back to how people had treated her before she had learned about the Creator. This time, she felt that there was strength inside of her, and also she had her fellow Blades who were supporting her.